Every surfer knows about the dangers of sharks, but they push those thoughts to the back of their minds every time they paddle out into the water. Their love for their sport is overpowering, and the likelihood of being attacked by a shark is slim at one in almost four million. But for the unlucky few, they become part of that statistic, and their worst nightmares become a reality. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. These are the terrifying shark attacks on Daniel McMoyer and Robin Warren. Welcome to Final Affliction. In December 2020, the Maui Women's Pro Surf Contest was in full swing at Honolulu Bay in Hawaii's Maui. It was early morning on the second day of the event, Tuesday, December 8th, and recreational surfer Robin Warren headed down to the water. He walked out to the old boat ramp and surveyed the ocean momentarily before pushing off into the water. He paddled out on his surfboard and into the bay. The surf was good, and 56-year-old Robin was looking forward to fitting in a surf before his work day began. But something was about to go tragically wrong. Below the waves, an enormous tiger shark was prowling the seas. It was just over 14 feet long. Its powerful body swam effortlessly through the water as it searched for easy prey. Always on the lookout for a meal, tiger sharks are opportunistic hunters that are among the top three shark species responsible for human attacks. They, along with bull sharks and great whites, are responsible for around 65% of the attacks on humans worldwide. Looking upwards, the shark could see Robin's silhouetted outline on the surface. His legs dangled on either side of his surfboard as he sat there waiting for the right wave. Inquisitively, the shark swam towards the surfer. It powered upwards, its enormous body camouflaged beneath the waves. At the last moment, it opened its impressive jaws full of teeth and closed them around Robin's leg. He was knocked from his board and into the water. At first, he didn't realize what had happened. But then, when he felt the immense pressure of the vice-like grip around his leg, his heart thundered in his chest. He looked down to see the dark shadow of the tiger shark. Its dark gray body arched out of the water. The shark wasn't letting go. It shook its head devastatingly from side to side, thrashing Robin this way and that. He tried to punch it away and gouge its eyes. The water frothed and bubbled and boiled all around him. Eyewitnesses on the shore looked out and saw the terrifying event unfolding. The attack was rapid and brutal. An enormous tail, estimated to be around four feet long, whipped upwards out of the water before plunging back down. Robin was dragged beneath the waves and disappeared from sight. Mercifully, moments later, the shark released him and he bobbed back up to the surface. He was helped to shore by others in the area and onlookers immediately began cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Minutes later, emergency services arrived and he was rushed to Maui Memorial Medical Center. For a moment, it looked as though he was going to make it. He arrived in a critical condition, but thanks to the dedicated work from the medical team, he was considered stable as evening drew in. Tragically, however, the following day, Robin succumbed to his injuries and died. When Robin's surfboard was recovered from the water, it was sent to the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology. Mucus from the shark's mouth was left behind on the board. Molecular microbiologists were able to swab this mucus and analyze the DNA to determine what species of shark was responsible. The DNA was 100% matched with a tiger shark. Next, they wanted to determine how big the animal was, with one of the witnesses reportedly seeing a four-foot tail thrashing about above the water people knew this animal was going to be big. From the bite that had been taken out of the surfboard, scientists at the Marine Institute estimated the size of the shark to be 14.3 feet or 4.3 meters long. With Hawaii considered a hot spot for surfing, human-shark interactions often make headlines. Almost 30 years previously, another surfer was taken by a tiger shark. His name was Daniel McMoyler. On December 17, 1993, he headed to the shores of Wapayo, Hawaii. With the natural beauty of rugged coastlines and the dependable surf, 
Wapayo Bay is popular with surfers. It offers year-round surfing opportunities in a more remote location than most. The tranquility of the spot was what Daniel was after. But with remoteness comes danger, as nobody is there to help if things go wrong. No one knows exactly what happened to Daniel that day, but he never returned home. There were no witnesses in the water with him. He was riding the waves solo, enjoying what turned out to be his final moments by himself, surrounded by the beauty of the Wapayo Valley. As he surfed, a tiger shark came in close. It was curious, and it was bold. Although tiger sharks have excellent eyesight, they also rely on their other senses to determine if something is prey or not. They mouth the potential prey item, biting it to see if it is worthy of an attack or not. But when an enormous species like a tiger, bull, or great white shark mouths something and takes a test bite, this often proves fatal. The particular tiger shark on the prowl that day was thought to be 8 feet, 2 meters long. The following is a potential scenario based on evidence found later and how shark attacks often unfold. The tiger shark swam stealthily below the surface of the water, its presence undetected by Daniel. He continued to surf, not knowing that his life was hanging in the balance, that his fate was about to be determined by a marine predator with millions of years of evolution behind it. As the shark approached Daniel, he caught a glimpse of it. The dorsal fin broke through the surface of the water, and Daniel knew that the shark was coming for him. It's every surfer's worst nightmare, the sudden realization that you may be on the menu and feeling very vulnerable inside the shark's domain. Daniel began kicking to get away from it, but it was too late. A split second later, and he watched in horror as the enormous head of a tiger shark erupted from the water next to him and grabbed the side of his board. Daniel was thrown off of it and into the sea. He trod water, trying to see exactly where the shark was. It had taken a chunk out of his board and then disappeared below the surface, but it wasn't finished with him yet. Daniel reached out for his surfboard and was pulling himself back on when he felt it the terrifying tug on his legs from below. At first, he didn't feel the agonizing pain of the bite, as hundreds of teeth pierced his skin and drove into his muscle. It was more like a pressure, like something clamping around his leg. He was pulled downwards and under the water. The shark was trying to drag him down into the depths, but Daniel fought back. He tried to kick his legs free. He reached down and tried to feel for the shark's eyes, something vulnerable which he could inflict pain in the hope that the shark would let go. But it was impossible. The shark thrashed its head around, and Daniel was tossed like a rag doll through the water. Moments later, it released him, and he bounced back up to the surface. He looked around him. The shore was a long way away. He lost sight of his surfboard. There was no one on the beach, nobody to witness his last moments, and nobody to help him. He kicked weakly in the water, but the shark had torn through blood vessels. Daniel was bleeding profusely. He looked down. The water surrounding him had turned a devastating shade. He was swimming in a dark cloud created by his own blood. Still conscious, Daniel made a last attempt to reach the beach. With every stroke he took, he was terrified that the shark was going to finish him off, but the shark didn't. It was biding its time, waiting for its prey to succumb before going in again. This was typical shark behavior. They often deliver a fatal bite and then wait for the prey to bleed out before tucking in once more. It stops them from being injured from the likes of seals and sea lions that can deliver powerful bites. Daniel could feel himself growing weak. He could feel the energy being sapped from him, and moments later, he lost consciousness. He never made it to the shore, and his body bobbed about in the bay, lifeless and alone. When Daniel didn't make it home, the alarm was raised, and a search party was sent out. It was December. The sea temperature was warm and inviting. But as the days and nights passed, any hopes that Daniel would be found alive in the ocean faded. It wasn't until January 11, 1994, that Daniel's remains washed up on the beach at Wapayo. Injuries to his body were consistent with a tiger shark, and the size of the bite marks suggest that it was around 8 feet long. 
He was the sixth person to be killed by a suspected tiger shark in Hawaiian waters in the previous three years alone. Despite these attacks, the local surfers weren't worried. A shark attack would never bring them to their terrifying final affliction. 